Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Laha, Raka Kodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, because those are the men who I've learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahashai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect, and shalom to you sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai camp. Las Vegas camp and uh, pretty much this lesson is going to be tiled as infirmities of adversities will increase upon the men of the Lord furnace of adversities will increase upon the men of the Lord and the reason why I tile this lesson as this is because we have to understand as Israelite men that we have to go through things in order to be able to sustain through them. And the Lord, he tries us individually in this truth. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Second Edges 14 and 14. And it says, let go from the mortal Thoughts, con, let go from the mortal thoughts. Mortal thoughts. That word mortal means death. When you have death thoughts, mortal thoughts, carnal thoughts of the flesh, wicked thoughts, whatever it may be, you have to put off mortal thoughts. You know, you go through all these different thoughts hitting your mind, man, making you feel low, you be put in a low estate. You have all these different thoughts going through your head. You got to pray to your how about you, shy, man. Read scriptures. I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. And ask the Lord to strengthen you. Whatever you're going through mentally, spiritually, or physically is your own triumph that the Lord is putting you through. Verse 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. And what is the weak nature? The mortal thoughts. Because in these mortal flesh, in these carnal bodies, they put us through these things. They have us go through these things. You know, you may deal with things, again, at work or whatever you deal with in your daily life in this mortal flesh is a trial, a trial, a tribulation that you have to endure through. And it could be many different things and temptation there's no end to it. We all have weaknesses in this truth. And the Lord knows where to try us individually. Verse 16. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. There's going to be an increase of these things. And things are going to get worse. As the longer you get in your journey, things are going to get worse. And there's going to be things that's going to be worse even in the time of Jacob trouble. So the things that you're dealing with now in your daily life, that's amateur work. That's amateur. Because the things that's going to happen in Jacob Trouble is going to be way worse than the, than the things that we deal with right now in our daily lives. You know, the finances, the, you know, situations like that. That ain't going to be nothing compared to Jacob Trouble. So that's why the scriptures tell us to endure it cheerfully. Because the things that are going to come, it's going to strengthen us. And we're going to be prepared because we used to being... We're used to being uh, afflicted. Verse 17. It says. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. And we see how weaker this society has gotten as an example. Right. It says so much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. So you're going to go through more things. The weaker this society is, the more afflictions that we're going to deal with in our daily lives here. I'm just using that as an example for understanding purposes. This this world, which Esau is, is ruling right now, is getting weaker as an example. There's things happening here. 
got all these pandemics, shutdowns, things in that nature, you know, and it's affecting not just the heathen nations, but it's affecting Israel as well. But this is why you got to be strong in the spirit of your mind and you got to ask the Lord to strengthen you in your faith because faith is what's going to get you through and faith is what's going to save you at the end of this whole thing, this whole thing. So you're going to go through hardships in this truth. It's not going to be sunshine and rainbows. And I'm speaking for myself first and foremost. So rock two and one, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, see, you came to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So you got to be prepared for it. You got to expect it. This is why we go through temptation because the Lord doesn't want us to be comfortable here. You know, in this in this society of Esau's of his rulership, because this place has fallen by the minute. This place has fallen beneath us by the minute. It says, set thy mind upright and consistently endure. So that's the whole point. As you being a man of the Lord, you have to consistently endure and take cheerfully. And it's easier said than done because I'm speaking it and I'm saying it. It's easier said than done. But, hey, you have to, you know, pray to the Lord and, and read these scriptures to keep you motivated and going, man. Verse 2, it says, set thy heart upright and consistently endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. See, make not haste in the time of trouble. Don't make quick, rational decisions because you think your situa situation that you're in now is bad. And you go and make a quick, rash decision. It's going to make your situation. It, it could make your situation a worse one than what it was before. So you don't want to make rash decisions. You know, as an example, it says and make not haste in the time of trouble. See, verse three, it says cleave unto him cleave unto who yahweh ba shim shai and depart not away it says that thou mayest be increased at thy last end so that's who we seek after that's who we pray to that's who we glorify because the lord is going to be there to get you through that through it he's right there with you you know verse verse four it says whatsoever is brought upon thee whatsoever is brought upon thee you as an individual whatever is brought upon you Whatever it is, take cheerfully. So you had to take it cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. And that's the thing with all of us individually. We, we have to learn to be patient when we're going through these trials and tribulations. A lot of these two thirds, they don't have patience. You know, they don't have patience. And it's, it's easier said than done to say that. But again, you know, they don't have patience. Everything, everyone expects everything now. Everything, everybody expects things to go well for them now, but we have to be patient. All right. And it says, verse five, for gold is tried in the fire. See, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So you're going to go through different things in this truth. You know, when you first come into this truth, it's sweet, it's nice, it's beautiful. You know, you're an Israelite. You know, you know that the, the, the prophets of the Bible are your forefathers. You know the true name of the Heavenly Father is only begotten Son. You know your true purposes as an Israelite, right? You know about the, the heritage of the high holy days, etc. You know, it's sweet. But then it starts to become sour as you get longer in the truth. Things just start going wrong. Maybe you were an individual that didn't go through nothing. Maybe you were an individual, everything was fine for you at first. But then when you start coming into the truth, everything just start. you just start losing stuff well again that's a good sign because uh, that lets you know that the lord is is dealing with you you know verse six it says believe in him believe in who yahweh Yashai. right it says and he will help thee it says order thy way of right and trust in him so you want to trust trust in the lord you you give all your the scriptures say i think it's second peter uh i think it was it 2 and 17 if i'm not mistaken or 2 and 7 2 and 17 it says cast all your cares upon the lord cast all your cares upon yahweh bashim all right it says believe in him and he will help thee order thy way of right and trust in him so you want to put your trust in the lord verse 7 it says ye that fear the lord because the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge right which is the wisdom knowledge and understanding of this truth that's the fear of the lord right the fear of the Lord. So you want to 
You want to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, which is the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is the wisdom, knowledge, understanding. It's a salaki. But you want to fear the Lord. It says, yet, it says, yet, it says, yet that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. See, wait for his mercy. Wait for his mercy. It says, and go not aside, lest ye fall. See, if you go aside from that, you're going to fall. You're going to fail. You know, verse 8, it says, yet that fear the Lord, believe in him, believe in the Lord, and your reward shall not fail. You see, your reward shall not fail. So this is this is why the whole point of enduring through temptation, it's, it's a trial. It's a continually trial for you individually in this truth. Luke 21 and 19, in your patience, possess ye your souls. See, in your patience. So we got to be patient. And that word patient it goes into the Greek word upamene, which means consistency or endurance. So you are to be consistent. You are to be patient, you know, consistently endure, endure through your afflictions. James 1 and 2, it says, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. So you're going to go through many different obstacles in this truth. You're going to go through many different things. Verse 3, it says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So you're going to be tried. You're going to be tried on your faith. Job was tried. He was tried. The Lord allowed Satan to mess with Job. And the Lord will send Satan after you to try you. You know, verse four, it says, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. See, so you want to be patient through all of that. You want to have patience. That's what's going to get you through is patience, man. Because we are going to go through our, our, our affirmities. And I got another precept, too, I should have add. Because we're not the only ones that go through these uh, tribulations. I think it's called, uh, uh, yep, brothers are suffering the same afflictions. This is uh, 1 Peter 5 and 9. It says, whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So you got some you got another individual out there that's going through the same thing that you're going through. You got another brother out there that's going through the same similar things as you go through. Hebrews 11 and 37. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were were tempted, right? Were slain with the sword. They were wandered about in sheep skins and goat skins, being destitute afflicted and tormented see so you're going to be destituted afflicted and tormented in this truth you're going to go through different things in this truth you know but it's all of your faith to get you through it man it's all of the trials and tribulations the lord's going to try you hebrews 12 and 6 it says for whom the lord loveth he chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth see so the lord is going to put you through different things He's going to put you through different scenarios and trials and tribulations. Verse 7, it says, If ye endure chastising, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. So if you're going through these trials and tribulations, don't look at it as a bad thing. That means that the Lord is dealing with you. If you're not going through nothing, that means the Lord ain't dealing with you. It says, For what son is he whom the Father chastised not? Verse 8, But if ye be without chastising, whereof are all, it says, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So that means that the Lord ain't dealing with you. So you want to, you know, pray and hope that the Lord is dealing with you and that you are going through things. Because if you're not going through nothing, then there's a problem there for you, you know. Verse 9, it says, Furthermore, we have, made, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. See, because we have fathers of the earth, right? We have earthly fathers. We have our earthly fathers. That corrected us. That got on us. When we would do bad, our father would be there to get on us. If you had a father in your life. If you had your grandparents raising you or your uncle or whoever, that's still, we have, that's still your father raising you on the earth. Correcting you, right? It says, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? See, so the Lord is going to do his chastising. Our spiritual, our spiritual father. We have our earthly fathers that disciplined us and raised us. But we have our earthly father that does the same thing, but on a higher level. So, you know, we're under the curses as Israelites as well. So, you know, there's not going to be no end to temptation until the Lord come back. 
But I want to read this again. Hebrews 11 and 37. They were stoned. So you have prophets that were stoned. They were sawn asunder. Tempt. They were tempted. You have prophets that were tempted. They were slain with the sword. You have prophets that were beheaded. They were wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. We get tormented in this truth. We deal with scoffers. We deal with persecution. We deal with bearing false witness individuals, bearing false witness. You deal with a lot being in the truth. You know, but are you going to be able to sustain through it? That's the thing. Even though you're going through what you're going through, are you going to be able to still sustain through it? You have individuals that went through these trials and tribulations and they winded up falling out. I pray that none of us are those individuals. Romans 5 and 3, it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Why? Because that lets us know that the Lord is dealing with us, knowing that the tri knowing that tribulation worketh patience. See, so it worketh patience. That word patient means consistency or endurance. And patient experience and experience hope. See, we have hope. That's why we, we're called the hopeful elect, because we have hope. Even though we're going through these hardships and these ass whoopings and these flesh and, you know, fighting a spiritual battle between ourselves, we still have hope. Verse 5, the Lord gave us that, the spirit of hope, the faith. Verse 5, it says, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of the Most High is shed abroad in our minds by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. See, so we have faith. We have hope. All right. We have hope. So, hey, man. I'm going to wrap it up with that. Lord wants less is edifying. So, hey, endure, you know, take it cheerfully. And this is 2024 now of Esau's world of 2024, the new year. Our new our new year ain't came yet, but this is Esau's new year. Things are going to increase even more this year. So, you know, we just consistently read these scriptures and pray, brothers. But things will begin to increase. And we're not far away from the Passover either. That's only in a couple. That's only in about two months from now. So Lord willing, that's what's edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom.